Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in this video, we are going to go a little more quantitatively and um, equation-based into the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant. So the goal here is to really mathematically show Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so if we start from our Gibbs free energy, we know that delta G is equal to minus RT ln K. We also know that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. Um, most likely these have been etched into your memory from biochem, um, but also gen chem as well. If I combine these equations and I do a little bit of algebra, I can get that the natural log of K is equal to delta H over RT plus delta S over R. And this is a really useful form of this equation. But what this equation is ignoring and what we didn't talk about in GenChem is that is that these terms, this delta H and this delta S, are dependent on temperature. And so is the ln of K. So if enthalpy and entropy are temperature independent, so that means that really we are working over small temperature ranges, that we can turn this combined equation into a graph where we put the natural log of KEQ on the y-axis and we put one over the temperature, we put this on the x-axis and we get a line. And what this means is that the slope is going to be equal to delta H over R and the intercept is going to be equal to delta S over R. And so if we can measure this equilibrium constant at various temperatures, we are going to be able to extract out the delta H and the delta S and thus delta G from this reaction. But really, delta H and delta S are not temperature independent. So these are the two equations that we've been working with, just explicitly marking that we are working at a new temperature, either hotter or colder. Now, delta H is our big one for temperature dependence. And in this one, if we do out the integral on how delta H is dependent upon temperature, we find that delta H at T2 is going to be equal to delta H at T1 plus T2 minus T1 times this change of the heat capacities. And this comes from that our delta H is really equal to CPDT, the integral of CPDT, and that's from way back when, um, chapter six or seven or something like that, um, whenever we started talking about how the delta H really is temperature dependent. We also, we can do something very similar with our delta S. Remember we talked about how that is also temperature dependent. Um, and we find that delta S is dependent also upon this this um, change of the heat capacity, but this time we're doing the natural log of the ratio of the temperatures, um, just based upon the difference be uh, between the formulas. If you're interested in this derivation, it is in your textbook. Now, over small temperature changes, we can really say very pretty precisely that the entropy is constant. And so this gets us to a much more simplified version of this equation. And this is a version of the equation that we really, that we like to use. And this is the version that 
question nine on your homework is going to be using. Now, if we think about Le Chatelier's principle, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to say, how does the equilibrium constant change with temperature? And so to do that, that change with temperature, that is a derivative. And so to mathematically show the, the Le Chatelier's principle, what we are going to do is we're going to take the derivative of delta G with, res with respect to T. And to do that, we're going to use kind of a combined formula. This is known as the Gibbs-Helmholtz. a sort of just a combination of a few different equations. Um, it's nothing new that it, it's nothing that we haven't already talked about. So now if I take if I plug in that delta G equals minus RT ln K so that I can take the derivative, ultimately what I find is that the change of the equilibrium constant with respect to temperature is equal to this delta H over RT squared. And so this, this gives us sort of the same idea that we were talking about before, where the direction of this change, how this equilibrium constant changes, is dependent upon whether or not this reaction is endothermic or exothermic, and it is dependent upon how endothermic or exothermic that it is, as well as how much we change the temperature. This is known as the Vant Hoff. Now, um, don't remember that name too much because it turns out that through um, thermodynamics, there are many, many Vant Hoff equations, um, and this is just one of them. And all of the Van Hoff equations are sort of combinations and derivations of, of other expressions that we've worked on. So ultimately where this got us is that the, this here, this Van Hoff, this is our formulaic description of Le Chatelier's. And so now we've taken something that you guys have memorized of if we add reactants, it shifts to products, or if it is exothermic and we add heat, it shifts to react reactants. We've taken that sort of qualitative picture and we have shown that there is a physical thermodynamical reason for our observations, especially with respect to temperature.